here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. I want to mention Andrew Zarian of the Mad Men Podcast is going to be on the show today. And Denise is going to be on the show tomorrow because they're both going to be covering the AEW show this weekend. And in fact, I mean, everyone's covering the show this weekend. Mad Men folks will be doing the watch along. And then immediately after the show, Denise will be doing her post show because she normally does the post shows because they were on Saturdays. But now it's on Sunday. So Denise is going to go immediately afterwards on YouTube. And then 30, 40 minutes later, she'll wrap up. And then Vinny and I and Craig, maybe, well, Vinny and I for sure, maybe Craig, depending on when she gets done, we'll be going twitch.tv slash F4W video. So giant weekend for coverage of AEW here. And obviously the two big stories everyone's talking about based off last night. I was going to make a joke, but why bother? It's Shaq, and it's the announcement that on Sunday there will be the debut of two wrestlers. One of them is going to be in the ladder match, and the other is going to be, quote, a major, huge, huge star in the world of wrestling that will be signing a multi-year deal. Now... I have no idea. I don't want to hear Dork saying that Brian's keeping the thing. I have no idea who this is, okay? But I was thinking about it here, and that's always a problem when you think. Although it's less of a problem with AEW than it is with WWE. If you try and think about what's going to happen in WWE, you just may as well just give up. But anyway, here's the thing. Paul White specifically said that the surprise was going to be... A big major star in the world of wrestling. A Hall of Fame caliber star, okay? Now, first people were like, well, maybe he's talking about himself. Okay, we can confirm he's not talking about himself. They're not doing some sort of swerve. There is somebody else that is coming on Sunday. Now, the big show also said, it's not who you think it is, okay? So, like, when he said that, I thought, I wasn't thinking of anybody, Who did you think that I was thinking of? All right? Now, the only thing that I can think that he thinks I was thinking of would be CM Punk. Okay? But I don't know if he was thinking of who I was thinking of. There was just a weird line. It's not who you think it is. Okay? So, obviously, CM Punk would be huge for AEW. I don't know long term, but, I mean, it would be a gigantic story if CM Punk signed with AEW. But, like, here's the thing that I was thinking. If you have CM Punk and he is going to sign with AEW and be this big surprise and you have a pay-per-view on Sunday and you are asking fans to pay like $50. I'm not sure what the... I think it's like 50 bucks or 55 Somebody could tell me if I'm wrong. But I mean, it's it's substantial. It's not $99 on the WWE Network or $5.99 on Peacock. I mean, they want you to pay some money for this show. Why would you not advertise the debut of CM Punk if you're asking people to spend 60 bucks? The other thing is, last night they opened with the debut of Shaq. Shaq was going to be wrestling on AEW. They put it in the first segment because the idea was, we're going to get this gigantic audience right at the beginning of the show. We're going to put this match in the ring. We're going to get our Sports Center moment. If you had CM Punk... If you're going to do a surprise appearance, why wouldn't Punk do the surprise appearance immediately after Shaq, and then you announce that he's going to be doing something big on the pay-per-view that you're going to be paying 60 bucks for? So, one time, one time I can see doing a surprise like CM Punk unannounced on a pay-per-view. Now, normally, there's no way you would do that. You, you want to actually make this this whole business about making money. So if you've got a punk, that's a guy you advertise for pay-per-view. Now, one time where you just surprise the hell out of the pro wrestling business and they didn't know and they bought their pay-per-view and they're so happy that they got punk. One time. But I don't know if this is the one time. So I'm thinking it's not CM Punk. Maybe it's Dave suggested a Kurt Angle or a Christian. Okay, they they did, I can't remember what it was, but one time Tony Khan promised some surprise it was going to change the landscape of wrestling, and people were let down by it. They had their hopes built up, and then it was someone that was not quite at that level. 
I feel like this is going to be a big star, but I don't feel like it's going to be CM Punk, and I could be wrong. Do you have any suggestions, Mike, on who you think this could be? I, for, the, the obvious name that sticks out to me is Kurt Angle because he's out of the realm of WWE. He just started doing his podcast. He fills the Hall of Fame portion of what Paul White was saying last night. And I know there are people that would immediately go, Kurt Angle never needs to be in a ring again. You're absolutely right about that. And I know there's people that say, well, AEW doesn't need an old guy. I, I guess you could say that. But if they wanted to make him a Sandy Scott, a Sergeant Slaughter, a troubleshooting official slash referee that could be there so Tony Khan never actually has to be on camera, I doubt that'll happen. But if you wanted an authority figure, Kurt Angle might actually be a good one to go with in that element. You know, so if you're going to bring him on, you could do that. I think what is more interesting is who is going to be in the ladder match because there's obviously some spots open for that. So could we be seeing the real name that's going to be making a more of an impact week after week after week as far as the wrestling goes? Could we see them actually uh, be there and then have just the bigger name for the Hall of Fame or, or whatever. I, I don't know. You know, I know Christian's name has been bandied about. I don't know. It, it, this is going to sound terrible because I really like Christian, but does he really help matters even if he's going to wrestle? Is, is he who you want to bring in? So I, I don't know who it could be. You know, CM Punk is the most fun name to throw around. I think when you start throwing away, uh, some of the other people who are free agents out there, their names around, it's like, okay, well, who are you going to bring in that's not going to come off as a little bit of a disappointment? But we'll just have to see. Everything was left so vague last night. Well, let's say this because there's a bunch of people here now. Ah, oh, it could be John Cena. Listen, I don't know who it is, okay? But, like, 99.9, .9, it's not John Cena. Here, here's the thing, okay? First off, if John Cena's made an offer by Tony Khan, okay... Vince is going to give him double that, all right? It's different with The Big Show. They weren't doing nothing with The Big Show. And in his role, he was a humiliated legend on Legends Night. You really think that if John Cena would have been at Legends Night, they would have humiliated John? Of course not, okay? The other thing is, and this is the most important thing, actually. Remember when they, they, they signed Sting? And they were like, okay, I know how you, we've, you know, legends, you signed him and he never shows up. Sting's going to be here all the time. Like, we signed him, he's going to be on every show. And he's been on every show to the point that people are like, he's not doing anything. He's just on every show. John Cena is filming a major motion picture in Vancouver, okay? John Cena can't even get here for WrestleMania and get back the, the quarantine rules, which they would require him to do going back to Canada. He can't even make it here for WrestleMania. He's not leaving this film... To show up for an AEW pay-per-view and then have to quarantine two weeks and shut down production. Not to mention, if they do, if they did sign John Cena, they're gonna want John Cena on TV all the time like they do with Sting. You don't sign John Cena for massive money and then like, well, he's here for the pay-per-view. We'll see you in three months, buddy. So it's not John Cena. Now, we don't have a lot of time here, so we'll talk about it more when we come back from the break. But I would like to say that yesterday I tweeted. I can't wait for tomorrow. And I had these people going, oh, Brian's such a jerk. He's just, he's so excited that AEW is going to win. Dude, this had nothing to do with the ratings. This had to do with, I couldn't wait to see the anti-AEW fans tie themselves in knots to convince themselves that the Shaq match was a failure. And amazingly, I haven't even seen that. I had no hope Okay, I shouldn't say I had no hope. I did say that they weren't stupid, and the fact that they were putting this on live, they must have felt that it would be good. But I did say I have no evidence, no evidence that this match can be any good. We know nothing about Jade Cargill. Red Velvet's done a couple of matches. Shaq's gimmick, like everything we've ever seen of Shaq, he's just a big lazy guy. I had no hope. And I think it's safe to say it overachieved everybody's expectations. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.